Well, welcome to another episode of Conversations on Hope. I'm joined by Becky Drake. Nick and Becky are dear friends of ours in the UK. Uh, they founded a ministry called Worship for Everyone in 2010 when they were serving at a church in London. They are both now in Birmingham in the UK. Becky works as school chaplain at the Blue Coat School, and uh, Nick is a vicar there at uh, Gas Street Church. Becky, welcome. Thank you, Glenn. Great to see you today. Great to see you too. Tell our listeners a little bit about Worship for Everyone and how that got started and what led you to create this. Sure. Well, my husband Nick and I have for years just loved worship, loved leading worship, been involved in it for many, many years. And I think Worship for Everyone began when we moved to a big church in London and were regularly leading worship with children present mm -hmm. and soon spotted that actually the values that we upheld so dearly when adults were in the room, values like encounter, mm -hmm. intimacy, and um, mm -hmm. kind of went out of the window when children were present. And so we kind of inherited a bunch of songs that we would lead with the children that felt, if I'm really honest, like we were leading kind of Christian nursery rhymes for kids. Yeah, yeah, and we yeah. would look out at our congregation and see that many adults were sort of enduring this. Mm. And only really the very littlest children in the room were perhaps getting something out of it. They were enjoying doing a few action yeah. songs. But I think in its genesis, we began to want to write songs that would truly unite all ages in worship. We wanted to see if there was a way of writing songs where adults could truly encounter God alongside their children. And so we be just began to write songs that were ideally still simple. So the melodies and the lyrics were easy to pick up by the youngest in, in the crowd, mm -hmm. but that actually there was something meaningful in it for mm -hmm. everyone in the room. And that's been our heart and our goal with all our songwriting really since. That's what Worship for Everyone is about. It's saying we don't want to lower the standard or the expectation just because children are present. We want to believe that God wants to encounter these little ones as much as the older ones in the room. That's so amazing. You and Nick have been such an influence on me in kind of reclaiming the importance of encounter and to not set that aside. There's a lot of conversation about, you know, worship is formation and all of that. But at the heart of this is this expectation that we're going to meet with God and God's going to meet with us. And so for you to be able to make that available even to children, I think isn't it's it's such a beautiful thing. I, I can think of moments when I was a kid, moments of encounter in the presence of God. And obviously as a parent now, I've got four kids, you guys have four kids. We want our kids yeah. to experience this. So during this lockdown season, you guys have, have just had this outburst of creativity. You're, you've done Facebook Lives, you've written new songs. Uh, tell us a little bit about what you've been up to. You know, that has been for us actually one of the amazing things that has come out of the pandemic. So obviously it's been, it's been tough, it's been hard being home, home schooling four kids I'm sure you guys have found it the same as well as juggling work mm -hmm. but there has been as you just said an outpouring of creativity and we've in, really enjoyed we did the first thing we did is we just got our kids in the room set up a Facebook live mm -hmm. and we thought let's have an experiment and just from our home to the rest of the world whoever wants to join us we're just going to sing some of our songs tell a bible story and see what happens and we were amazed at the response mm -hmm. and and actually it's been so unpolished so chaotic at times all our kids have been in it's been unpredictable on the edge but it seems to have connected with lots of hearts and I think something about just the authenticity of a family mucking through together Amazing. trying to worship God perhaps made it accessible to many others and and I think other churches have thought okay we can have a go at this now mm. so that's been really exciting and then I think probably one of the most um thrilling bits of lockdown for me has been a song that I wrote for my school do you want me to say a bit about that please do the, the rainbow yeah that's it, the rainbow song. Well, I'm not sure if you picked up because I think it was different in the States, but in our country, the, the rainbow through the pandemic has become a symbol that many, many households have been using. So children have been painting rainbows and sticking them up in their windows. No and it's come about as, yeah, and it's become this image of we're supporting our national health service. But obviously, mm. For us as people of faith, it's this amazing historical image of the rainbow and God's promise to mankind. So yeah. um, it's become a really significant image. And then one day I was standing in my kitchen and just had these slightly cheesy words going around my head, which was, even though we're in lockdown, we won't be knocked down because yes. we're still a family. You got it? Oh, and, I um, love, we love so the we, song. Have you heard it? Oh, oh yeah. <laughs> Well, it's a bit of an earworm. Um, 
But the, the whole heart of the song is, as we look to the rainbow, we know that there's hope for you and me and a new day will come. And I wanted to write that for the school community that I was working in, largely because, um, as you mentioned at the start, Glenn, I'm a school chaplain. And so one of my roles through the pandemic has been phoning, making pastoral calls to children at home, and particularly those that are a little more vulnerable. Um, and I just detected that right at the start, there was a bit of a honeymoon period and most of them were quite happy to be home yeah. and having a break from school. And then yeah. within a few weeks, it really started to change. And not only for the children, but for lots of the parents that I spoke to, the tone had shifted and they were low and bored. Yeah. Um, and so this song, I thought they just need a little injection of hope and joy. And so we got a bunch of our children to do one of those recordings that you'll have seen lots of yes. people doing, all in their little boxes. And we put this song together, Looking to the Rainbow, and, and it, it, it seemed to be a real blessing to our school community and, and then went on actually to be a blessing to many other schools as well. It, it's a tremendous song and it's such a perfect oh. picture of how music and worship specifically can bring hope. And, and hope to these young people like you're talking about who are feeling lonely, feeling isolated. I've heard from a lot of families who said, yeah, the, the pandemic has been tough on our children because they've missed their friends, they've felt alone. For, for kids whose home life is difficult, you know, so that song was amazing. And then there was another one that you guys released recently called Slingshot. That's right, yeah. Well, well, we were so lucky with that because we'd written these songs just before we went into lockdown in the UK. Mm -hmm. And the day we recorded Slingshot was the day before the government announced the lockdown. And so we'd been recording these vocals down in Brighton, um, just a few hours from where we lived, got home, and then we all went into lockdown. So we had that song in the can, and it was really brilliant to be able to, again, it's timely, really, that we were able to release that at a point in lockdown, where, again, it, it, as you just said, there's such power in music, isn't there, to yes. lift our spirit, yes. lift our focus, mm. um, and to sort of um, release us from feeling stuck, I think. Mm. Um, which is, yeah, so it's been great to have those creative moments. What would you say to parents out there who maybe they're not musical themselves and they're not writers? Um, obviously, they can go find your songs and find you know, the whole catalog of Worship for Everyone stuff on YouTube or Spotify. But how can we use music in our homes to engage with our children and to lift their hearts? Mm, that's a great question. I mean, I think one of the interesting and um, amazing things about children is that they are so um, in the present and you'll know this from having four children of your own they live in the present typically don't they and they need I think they need help actually with hope and with looking ahead and with perspective and all that kind of stuff and so I've been reflecting on this and how um, you know those amazing words in the book of Romans which say how when we suffer and um, it produces perseverance that progression into which then forms character oh, yes. and then leads to hope. I, I love that progression, it fascinates me. But one of the things I think where children are concerned, it's this whole area of character to hope. Huh. Because huh. that, that is, that's indicates, doesn't it, that as we kind of grow in our formation, we grow more like Christ, yeah. we in a way get to access more hope. And as children are still very much in those early stages of formation, I do think they need help with hope. It's yes. hard for them yes. to look ahead and to think, okay, actually there is something better coming. So I think they can quickly mm. go into crisis mode. That's where the, the tantrums and the meltdowns come. It's a disaster, you know, all that <laughs> stuff. Um, so so I, I, and I see this with my own children all the time. And so for me, as a mum in lockdown, music played a great part mm. in, again, opening up their spirits and their hearts to, to the bigger picture and the bigger yeah. truths. And um, God's with us in all of this, that there's a brighter future coming, that, um, you know, all of that stuff that as adults we need to be reminded of when mm. we feel low. Um, so I think just having it on in the household, you know, I will have, I'm sure you're the same in your house. I have the worship on when I'm cooking yeah, and the kids yeah. then stepping into just this different mm -hmm. atmosphere um, mm -hmm. where they can access the wonderful truths that are, that are going on around them. And another thing I think that we can do as parents is particularly, I think nighttime is such a key time yes. where stuff catches up with kids, doesn't it? Yeah. I don't know if you find this in your house, but I have my big chats with my children often Absolutely. at the end of the day. Yep. You just say, yeah. And that's, I think, an opportunity to really speak some hope and to, and to use music. And one of our children has really struggled to sleep in lockdown. Mm. Um, I think it's been quite typical for, 
for many people actually yep. The, yep. that kind of change of being indoors all the time but she has really battled and actually mm. we've run out of strategies other than worship mm. and at the moment that's what she does she has worship on in her room and it, it doesn't necessarily always mean she falls asleep sure. but she has She's got that wonderful hope that God is with her yes. um, and that that's eternal and that, that this won't be like this forever. And I think that's the wonderful thing that music can do for us. That is so powerful. Thank you, Becky. Music and worship providing the experience of encounter and the formation, God's presence yeah. with us and the, the ability to persevere. Thank you so much for spending some time having this conversation on Hope. Christians sing. In dark prison cells and in weekly worship, when hearts are buoyant and when all seems lost, Christians sing. This is what we do. And Christians sing because we are people of hope. But what kind of hope is it? And what exactly are we singing about when we experience this hope? Worship in the World to Come is a book that's been seven years in the making. It captures the essence of my doctoral research on how Christian hope is encoded in the contemporary worship songs that we sing and experienced in the worship services that we participate in. And the book is divided into four sections. The first section kind of sets the stage. It explores a little bit about what practical theology is and this model of putting together theory and practice. And then it looks at three contemporary paradigms of congregational worship. What are three contemporary ways of thinking about what the church is doing when it gathers together in worship? The next section is all about hope. Hope from various perspectives, from the cognitive and emotional, uh, from the philosophical to the theological. And then we move to part three, which is all about the songs and services that we participate in, evangelicals and Christian hope. The final section of the book is about the Holy Spirit and the church. How is it that the Holy Spirit is at work as we worship, giving us a foretaste of the future now, empowering us with a sense of agency? So join me in this exploration of hope and worship. Pick up your copy of Worship in the World to Come today.